you turn to in 2 Timothy. Now, I've got several different places uh, I want to read a little scripture from, but uh, let's just stick to this one and then just, if you would, just listen to the message a little bit today. I'm not much of a spokesman today or a preacher. Uh, we've been kind of puny. And, uh, but hopefully, uh, we're going to, as an old fellow used to say, I can't get over the fence, but I might climb through it. And, uh, but thank you, honey. But, uh, anyway, in 2 Timothy, in chapter number two, uh, I want you to, to think about something today, if you would please. Uh, the kind of a person that God can use. And as uh, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord. It's me. The I don't have a problem with you. I've got a problem with me. And when I can... It's all I can do, and when I get straight and get all of my eggs in one basket, boy, me and God together, or God in me, can have a good time. But I've got to, I've got to get things sorted out in my life before I can take and do anything that will honor Him. But... I want to say this, and I say it to you in love. And it's, I keep my house swept out. You just do the same. It's because Christ is talking about here and t using Timothy to get this point across that too many people try to take care of too many other people. Amen. And we just need, you're going to answer for yourself, and I'm going to answer for me. And you know, Stella, when we do that, and we get everything together, you know, the other fellow won't look, he just don't look near as bad as we thought he would. But if you found your place, Second Timothy chapter two, would you stand with us for just a minute today? And I'd like to read from verse eight or nineteen, somewhere along there, down through verse number twenty-six. That's the remaining part of that chapter. And the Bible says here in verse nineteen, nevertheless. The foundation of God standeth sure. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? God don't change, but you do, and the next fellow does. Amen. But God stays the same. Amen. He, he don't come to your level, and He don't come to mine. He can, he can come when you and I quit packing everything off on the devil. The devil don't always, he's not always the blame. Amen. And I want to clarify that to a point. A lot of times it's just our fleshly nature that just takes on. We do things because we want to and just say, hey, the devil made me do it. No, no. But, all right, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. See what I mean? But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of, and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified 
and meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But the foolish, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do now do kinder or gender strife. They they build up strife. All right. But he said in verse twenty four, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but it, but he but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and pay or patient. <laughs> In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of a snare of the devil who are taken, now listen to this, captive by him at his will. Heavenly Father, honor thy word and thy servant. God help us, Lord, this morning. God, to do your will in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, as we begin to look at this, you know, we that are saved should have a desire to serve God. That desire, if you're really saved and you're saved through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a desire to, to serve God above all things. And the thing about it is, you know, it is not, it's not a burden, but it's a privilege to serve God. It's a privilege to go to the house of God. But as we begin to look at this, in 2 Timothy, in cha all of chapter 2, Paul gives five names for, now listen, listen carefully to what I'm saying, for a Christian. There are five names in this, for, in this chapter for a, a Christian, and I'm going to give them to you. And as you, as we look at these and we look at them, these are not all, I've not got five points this morning, but the thing about it is I want to help you see what a Christian is. First of all, look in verse number one, and you're going to find out here, he says, a son. A son, five names for a Christian. He said, therefore, my son. He's, he's saying here in the likeness or in the, to look like a Christian, look like that you are a son of God, act like it. You know, just like uh, Brother Michael, he said just a little earlier, how do you get your testimony back? How do you get everything back? How do you, how do you go in this world and you do wrong then turn her right around and go out there and try to witness for uh, the glory of God. Hey, the, they're always going to look at the bad, but they're not going to look at the good. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. You know, there there is a good, good lesson in all of that. Verse number one, a son. These are a good name for a Christian. All right. In verse number three, look what he calls him. He says, he's a, you're a soldier. You are a soldier. There's a warfare. There's a battle to be fought out there. And if you're fighting that battle, but as a Christian, then you've got something to be proud of. Thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But look in verse number 12, uh, and you're going to see that he said here that you're a sufferer. He said here, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Brother, the 
there's a lot of battles and a lot of things that's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt your feelings but it won't knock that salvation out of your soul. Brother, when you're saved, you're saved through the blood of the Lamb of God and you're going to suffer. A lot of people, God, or not a lot, let me change uh, uh, the motivation of speech there. The thing about it, but some people get a a kick out of talking about other people. Brother, I'll tell you, it's all I can do just take care of me and I don't have to do that. So what he is saying here, look down in verse number 15 and what's called a Christian. He's called him a student. He said study. Study to show what not your neighbor, not not somebody down the road, but he's saying, hey, to show thyself, show yourself, brother, unto God. Listen, I, God's the one that's going to judge me. God's the one I'm going to stand before one of these days. And what we need today is more of God than we've ever had in our life, folks. There's a battle, there's a war of coming in a little while while. But boy, thank God for the blood. I'm not going to be here. This old world is going to burn down. She's going to melt out. But look also in verse number 24. What does it say here? And a lot of folks, boy, even Christians most of all, what is he saying? He said, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. Uh, brother, what uh, is he talking about? You're not to cause uh, problems. What kind of a person uh, can God use? Uh, you know, is what I want to talk to you today. What kind of a person uh, can God reach down uh, and depend on uh, to do the bidding that he has called for us to bid? Uh, and the thing about it is uh, it's all of these things, uh, but also uh, look in verse number 19, uh, and we'll get into the message today. Uh, what is he talking about? Uh, these verses we can find, look in uh, our victory. Uh, he said in verse number 19, nevertheless the foundation uh, of God stands sure. Uh, brother, there's victory coming uh, for a child of God. Uh, it's not always going to be suffering. Uh, It's not always going to be gloom and doom. Uh, Brother, what we need to do today uh, is just look up. Uh, Brother, help is already on the way. Uh, If we just asked him uh, and look in verse number 21, uh, he said you're a vessel. Uh, And brother, what I need to be uh, is that uh, therefore if any men. Therefore he said if a man therefore purge himself. Clean up uh, what that word means. Uh, He said really uh, you need to be holding something uh, on the inside. Uh, Brother I can take uh, a quart jar of Jean's Beats that she can uh, and I can hold that thing up uh, and I can tell it's a can of beets. Uh, all right, but I want to ask you this. Uh, are you a person uh, that God can just hold up uh, and say, look here, folks, this is my child. Uh, boy, that's what I want to be. Uh, I want the world to know today uh, that Dean Adams has been washed in the blood uh, of the Lamb of God. Uh, I want God to hold me up. Uh, I want God to just uh, just Just uh, sustain me. uh, Put the legs under me uh, that God wants me to have. Uh, Brother, uh, if God wants me to be a cripple, uh, then I want to do it for the glory of God. Uh, But brother, listen, uh, God said we have not because we ask not. Uh, All right, brother, you don't have to be uh, a cripple in your heart uh, or a cripple as a world sees uh, the reason we have a lot of things uh, we don't 
ask God to take control. Uh, what kind of a man, uh, what kind of a person uh, can God use? Uh, brother, look what he said uh, in verse number 22. Uh, he said here, uh, flee also youthful lust, uh, but follow righteousness. Uh, I'm talking about virtue. Uh, I'm talking about cleanliness uh, in the heart. Uh, people say, well, the Word of God said uh, that cleanliness is next uh, to godliness. That's not in the Word of God. Uh, the only thing that's going to clean you and I is the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, that's what's going to keep us uh, all right. But let's look at this. Uh, what uh, kind of a person? Uh, it's a walking person. Uh, one that'll walk. Uh, not only talk the Word of God, uh, but walk it out from day to day. Uh, and we need to do this. Uh, in Proverbs chapter uh, 18 and verse number 24, uh, listen, uh, the Word of God is powerful. Uh, and he said over here uh, in verse number 24 uh, of the book of Proverbs, uh, he said, now uh, listen to uh, what he is talking about. Uh, he is telling us, I mean, 18, chapter 18 uh, and verse 24, uh, and it said, a man uh, that hath friends uh, must show himself friendly, uh, and there is a friend uh, that stick closer than a brother. Uh, brother, what's he talking about? Listen, uh, a lot of folks walk around uh, and they got a smirk on their face. Uh, they have got, uh, they never have a word for the glory of God. Uh, brother, that's one uh, that God can use. Uh, when you get saved, uh, God said, go ye therefore uh, and he's talking about to each one of us uh, as individuals today. We've got a story to tell. We can tell it all day about him. Uh, the Word of God said there uh, in verse 19, uh, he said uh, the foundation uh, of God. Uh, but the very first word, uh, he said, nevertheless, uh, it don't matter what you're facing, uh, uh, brother. God can help you share the load. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden's light. All we got to do is call upon him. Well, I'm going to work everything out. Uh, I've, I've been told that so many times. Uh, go into a home uh, and he'll say, well, uh, when I quit drinking uh, or when I quit lying uh, or when I quit running around or all of this, uh, hey, brother, uh, that flesh, uh, you can't clean it up. Uh, brother, there's sin. We are born in sin and our nature is sinful and it's going to take God to get you out of the ditch. It's going to take the blood of the Lamb of God to straighten you out and that's a kind of a man or a woman that God can use. Brother, remember what did he tell Peter over there? He said, stir up their pure mind. Stir them up by the way of remembrance. Brother, remember where God brought you from. But don't brag about yesterday. Brag on Him today. He's the one the world needs to hear about. Not how mean you was, what all you done, and all the things in the past when God walked, uh, washed them away, brother. You got no business picking them back up. Amen. Brother, I'm glad God buried everything and everybody's past when they're saved. See, God didn't give me, Brother Jake or Brother James, anything, Brother Mike. God didn't give none of you women nothing that He won't give me except one thing. God will never call you to preach. 
Hey, you can't be the husband of one wife. Hey, see, God has stipulations. Brother, he said, brother, when God saved you, put off the old coat and put on the new. He said, study to show thyself approved, a workman under God that needeth not to be ashamed. Brother, what? We are to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. You got to rightly divide. You can take the word of God and you can make it say just about anything you want to. If you grab a little verse here, part of a verse over yonder, a little bit of this, hey, God gave it all to us. Amen. It's holy. Amen. The cover is God's Word. It's a holy book. And also, the thing about we got to walk friendly. And brother, that's got to be a faithful walk. I'm talking about faith, F-A-I-T-H, faithful. You know the last part of that ought to have two L's on it. You ought to be full. But he said in 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, now look what he said in verse number 58. Therefore... My beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. That means to be nailed down. And he said, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. What? Let's read it all in the Lord. Amen. Brother, you can walk. Think about it. You can walk or you can walk right. Our boys just pray for us. I'm on them old steroids trying to help me to get through this. And brother, I don't know if I'll be a pig leg or what it'll be, but to thank God one of these days I'll have a body that works. Amen. But the thing about it, scripturally, this book is sound under God. In John chapter 4, now listen to what the Word of God says here about this being scripturally sound. God is telling us to walk with Him, to talk with Him, and to be scripturally and spiritually sound. In John, in chapter 4 and verse 24, listen to what He said. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Brother, we need, we need God, we need Him, but we need to worship Him in spirit and in the truth. Here's truth. Right here it is. This is all you and I need today. That's all you need is the Word of God. And the thing is this, we need to be totally sound. You know, God, God is all merciful and God is all powerful. But God said unto us, now my throat's not hurting, it's just my voice. All right. But the thing is, he told us over here, he said, now, if you walk with me, you can go home with me. What did he tell Enoch? Oh, Enoch. Enoch was a young man when he started out, just like all of us. But the Word of God said then he walked with God. He walked with Him. He was spiritually sound in the work of God. And one day God just will come up to him. You'll find it over in Genesis in chapter number 5, and you'll find it also in Hebrews 11 and number 5. 
But God said, hey, come on, ain't it? Just go home with me. And God took him. That's a type of the resurrection of us going home. We're going to be called out. Amen. We're going to be called one of these days to go home with the Lord. And what we need today is to be submissive. Submissive more than anything else is to be that. And what are you talking about? I'm talking about, look at Abraham. Abraham had a fleshly body. Abraham had a fleshly son. But God, what kind of man can God use? Abraham also had a holy God. Amen. His body, his son was part of him. And he was giving it all. That's the kind of person God can use. God can use what we give him to work with. What does God have to work with in you? What, what are you doing with what God give you? I want to stay in bed this morning. But she just kept nagging till I got up. <laughs> and the thing about it is, no, brother, I'm here today because God has called me to do this. Do this. Hey, boy, I don't know if I want that or not. Boy, I'm going to tell you right now, he's probably got spirits in this thing. <laughs> yeah, you got, hey, you got to watch these uh, people that's sitting in a higher seat. <laughs> I didn't want to go too far into this. All right, but the thing is this, and we'll be cutting this a little short this morning on account of this, but not too short. But the thing about a worshiping, worshiping Son of God, a worshiping child of God, how can God use that? Showing, showing, showing. Hey, listen, people want to see a Christian, not hear about a Christian. Would you? Woo! No, I'm serious. <laughs> but the thing about it is this. You could hear about Abraham all the way through the Word of God. You can hear about him. You can read about him. But it's not Abraham that you need to know so much about. It's the God he served. Amen. That's the one. What did he tell those men that day? He said, you wait here. Wait at the foot of the mountain. Me and my son. Me and my flesh. Me and my son. Son was part of Abraham. But he said, we are going yonder to worship. We're going yonder and we'll be back in a little while. We'll be back. That's faith. That's faith. Amen. And boy, the thing about it is, it's a, it's submissive. In Second Chronicles, and as I begin to look at this, I want you to think about something as we read this this morning. It's about a man called Solomon. Now, Second Chronicles in chapter number seven. I want to read the first three verses. I hope you can understand me. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. Can you pray the fire down? I wish somebody would pray this 
problem. <laughs> All right? But he said, he came down, consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Boy, now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about being submissive unto God. How long's it been? How long has it been? Let me ask you this question right off of the top. Have you ever prayed the fire down from God on your life? I mean, be a praying and God just got all over you. That's what happened to Solomon. That's what happened to the whole house. Because he said here that the Lord filled the house. Amen. I've been in a service when it seemed like it was just smoky. The glory of God. And he said in verse 2, And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord. It'd be hard to get in. Why? Because they weren't as holy as God is. God is holy. God said, be ye holy. But he said, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Boy, when the big preacher comes, I want to just step back and let God have it. Amen, amen. Don't get in God's way. Verse 3, And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, notice one word, they saw it. They, the word saw, they seen what a Christian that God could use. They saw a man that God could use. They saw a submissive person that God had used. But he said, when they saw the fire come down, the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves. When everybody gets right with God, no preacher, no when you get right, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me. Did you know you can hinder a revival? You can hinder a service? Just come in and you fall all the way to church. You are great all the way to church. And then you get out of the car, you come in here, and you have kind of a flat service. But we had a good service, but you didn't. Why? You come in the wrong spirit. You came in, it, you just come to maybe get somebody off your back. See there? <laughs> All right. But what am I talking about? The thing about you need to be in the right spirit. Yes. All right. Maybe the devil wants me to quit, but I ain't going to. All right. But the thing about and I ain't going to blame it on him. It's just a health issue. But he said in verse number three, and they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Hey. Brother, that's what we need today. We need some praying Christians. We need some Christians that's not ashamed. We need some Christians that live like a Christian, that walk like a Christian. What kind of a person can God use? One that's committed to God. All right? But look at the last thing. God wants a weeping person. Have you ever 
just wept, just really wept over a lost one, one in your family, one that's out of the will of God. That's what he's talking about here in Timothy. What did he say? He said, therefore, he said up here, and he said, but to flee all of this, but he said, a servant of the Lord must strive, but be gentle, be gentle, work at it, the weeping person. All we need, look what he said in Psalm 126 in verse number six. Let me read, let me just read it to you. Verse, Psalm 26, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Now listen, he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing and bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. He's talking about Wednesday night. How many is going to follow you in? When you stand before God, how many is going to follow you in? They're going to say, hey, he led me to God. Hey, that's, hey, that preacher led me to God. Hey, that servant over yonder, that person that can't read and he can't write, boy, I, that's the one that led me to God. Amen. Don't tell me about God. Show me about God. Let me see God in your life. Let me see that you've been to Calvary. That is what he is saying here. He said, weep, weep. You know what about just getting down and weeping for the sick? Weeping for them that are not only sick in body, but I'm talking about sin sick. Weeping. How long has it been since you really prayed? And God just got all over you and you just started bawling. I, well, preacher, that ain't never happened. Shame on you. You need to have a burden for that one that's not only sick in body, but sin sick. They are lost without God. Not only that, we need, we need to weep for the saints of God that are really striving to live and live as close to God as they possibly can. Christians are having a hard time. Did you know that? They're having a hard time. They're going to have a harder time. Let me tell you why. This book's being taken out of their hands. And other books are taking their place. There's the computer book. There's a cell phone book. There is all kinds of books that are out there that don't represent this book. The old 1611 Boy, she stood the fight. And the, she stood in the battles and she's still fighting. There's a battle being fought here in America today. And it's going to be worse. But the thing about it is, he needs a person that will walk with him, talk with him. And be in unity. unity. When you're in unity with somebody, you're, hey, we agree. Yeah, we in, see, I, he didn't say a word. I didn't say a word till we come up with the same thing. God will set perfect minds. Yeah, take a bow. All right. But the thing about it is, hey, all things don't work 
like we want it to, but it said all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Oh, I'll tell you, isn't God something? Amen. Oh, God is something. And you know what? I'm somebody going somewhere. Amen. We're going somewhere. Like that little shirt did I get Jennifer when she's just a little fella. I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. You are somebody going somewhere. Brother, what we need today, y'all need, is a good preacher. <laughs> but the thing about it is, the, we need to strive together and work hard. But the man, you know how it all starts? It starts with me. It starts with me. Then that flame, that spark is thrown out. And then it's in your hands. But where did it all start? It started at Calvary. Amen. When you got saved, God gave you a job. You're the person, you're the precious person that God can use. You're it. God can use you. All you have to do is be submissive. Amen. Say, God, just use me. God, just use me. Please, Lord. Lord, would you just use me? And God, help me to be totally submissive. Not a spare tire deal. Just take God out when you want Him. No, no. And you think you need Him. No, no. You need Him all the time. You need Him every day. And you are the person God can use. God saved you. How long has it been since you just talked to Him like you talk to a friend that you're in love with and you love their soul? I'm not talking about a physical condemning love. I'm talking about the love of God. How do you get in love with somebody other than your family get saved? Amen. You're going to love them. It don't matter where they're from. What matters is where they're going. Amen. We need to help them on the way. Heavenly Father, <laughs> as we close today, Lord, our voice is not what it should be, but Lord, it's the way you want it to be, I hope. But Lord, if it's messed up, God, it's my fault. But Lord, if there's any good or any glory in it, God, it's to your precious name that it came. Now, Lord Jesus, God, help us to look deep inside. Am I the person that you can use? And Lord, if I'm not, then why aren't I? Why am I not? Maybe we're not submissive. Maybe we're not praying. Maybe we're not applying this Word to our life. We're not reading. We're not studying. Lord, we're not walking in the light of Your power, Your strength. So God, would You just help us today? Just help us. Heads bowed. Everyone standing, if they would, please. I won't ask you a question while you're just looking at yourself. 
Look at yourself deep. Look down in your heart. Are you the person God's using? No, preacher. I'm not the person, but I sure would like to be. Well, as I looked at this message this week, I thought, dear God, am I the person you can use? Am I everything? He said, no, I'm still working on you. Maybe you're in that situation, but you hadn't asked God for help. Would you just be honest today? God, I need some help. You don't have to come to this altar unless the Holy Spirit brings you, but you can sure go to the altar in your home, in your life, in your car. Don't close your eyes while you're praying, but pray and get a hold of God. Heavenly Father, as we close the service today, <laughs> Lord, I thank you for letting me stand as long as I have. But Lord, I pray today that God, I can show this church. And I pray that I can show the world that Christ lives in me. I want the world to know, Lord, especially ever sinner man that I come in contact with. God, just help them to see Jesus in me. Lord, that's my desire. I just want them to see Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the privilege to stand, the privilege to handle and open the book of God, that you are the living Word. And Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you most of all for saving my unworthy soul from a place called hell and give me a home in a place called heaven. Thank you, Lord, for everything and all you do and all we have is yours. Amen.